Hey everyone, um, can you hear me okay? Oh, okay, well, I'm gonna get started. Um, my name is Amanda Beasley and I graduated um, from the School of Art at UT. Um, I majored in art history and uh, sculpture, primarily in studio art. Um, and I currently live in Knoxville. I stayed in Knoxville and I work at the McClung Museum on campus. And while I've um, been there uh, during these times, I got to start creating some embroidery patterns based off of the, uh, the collections there. Um, I have one with me, the first one that I made um, from one of the prints. And I think it's going to get linked for you guys in the comments. But um, yeah, so I started embroidering um, just a few years ago, really. Uh, I hand sew a lot and I got very interested in, in embroidery through that. Um, and it's been really great to get to reconnect with it. Um, during these times right now, especially, and to create something that I can share with other people. Um, and yeah, so uh, to get started, um, <laughs> thanks. Uh, if you're new to embroidery, um, really all, all you need, especially to do what I'm gonna show you is some fabric. Um, I've got just some linen. And then um, if you don't have a hoop, but you wanna practice stitching, you can um, just hold it between your hands like this. It's important if you're going to embroider that you do eventually get a hoop to keep the tension on the fabric even. Otherwise you'll have puckering that you can kind of see here at the edges. Um, it'll do something like that around your stitches. So a hoop is really important for that. Um, but if you just want to practice different stitches, you can hold the fabric in between your fingers. Um, and then yeah, just some embroidery floss. Um, that's kind of what it looks like when you get it and you can get it in packs with different colors and uh, and then just your needles. I have a pack of embroidery needles and you can see they have different lengths um, and they are different sizes sometimes and different size floss but these are pretty standard um, that you can get pretty much anywhere. Any craft store, Amazon, all that sort of thing. Um, oops. And then uh, I'm going to show some basic stitches, some of my favorites, um, the split stitch, um, a stem stitch, and then um, straight stitching um, or, uh, or satin stitch to, uh, is what it's called for filling in. And then a uh, French knot is another one that I, I really like. Um, so I'm going to move the camera now so that you guys can see that. I got started playing around with it. Um, but first, so first I'll show you guys the split stitch that I've got going over here already. And you just pull it through. Oh, we got a little piece of... And then as you come back up, you wanna split the floss. Oh, I don't think I told you guys that. If you're not familiar, the embroidery thread is, is often called floss. That's its name. And then you just keep going like that. This is a really good technique and, and stitch to, um, for doing curved lines. I just drew a straight line here, but um, if you want to do a curved one, this will help keep that shape, that curve shape. It's also, I like to use it a lot if I'm using or making any words, using um, using this to kind of, it's good for that intricate, intricate kind of work. It's also good as an outline if you're making something that you want to outline, which I have an example of I can show you guys in a minute. But yeah, so that's the split stitch. And then, oops, I'll come through one more time and I'll go over here and show you guys the stem stitch, which is pretty similar. And you can use it in a variety. I have a bit of a curved line for it over here. Uh, 
Um, but instead of, once you've made the base one, instead of coming back up through the, the, the thread or the floss, you come up slightly next to it. And it kind of rolls it over to the side. And I use this um, for the stem um, quite a bit, for stems quite a bit, um, and used it on the, sorry, the linen's threading, okay. On that pattern I showed you guys originally. You can also use this stitch as a filler, um, which I did on the leaves for that first pattern that's linked there. You guys don't have to watch me go all the way through. I'll make that the last one, but you can see it start to, to come across and it holds its shape. I'll do one more. And then what I have up here above it is at the beginning of a leaf stitch. And I have that in another color. So starting, I, I already got it started because I was practicing stitching from the top, <laughs> but um, you come, you come up and you would come to one side, even for this first one at the top, even if I was starting here and you just come up and then come across, even though I'm a few stitches in. And then you start from the other opposite side and come over to that. Like so. And you just repeat that until it fills, fills up and starts to shape out. I used this one in that first pattern too. That's kind of why I picked these stitches is because I, I use them a lot, especially for the florals. And then also they're part of that first pattern. So if you wanted to try that pattern, um, you get a little bit more in depth of how to use it. But yeah, so you just keep going like that. And then I'll come down here to the satin stitch um, or straight stitch is pretty straightforward. It's just a straight line. But what I wanted to show you guys about it um, is that when you're trying to fill an area, like hopefully you guys can see my pencil marks, but um, I'll come over here. So I created or just drew this quick box. And when you're filling an area, it's good to go back and forth. So you're not trying to gauge how much room um, you're going to be filling and end up with some, a lot of overlapping. I'll show you what I mean. See how I've left some space oops, in between those stitches now. And it just helps you get an even fill when you're filling in an area. Some of mine may not be. And if you have any questions, feel free to type them in there while I'm stitching away I can answer them but yeah and then I'll just fill in one of these in-betweens and you can draw your own designs directly onto the fabric. I like to use pencil um, because it's pretty, it'll wear away as you, uh, after you've been working, it's not as noticeable after you've finished. But you can use um, marker or like a felt tip also. And hopefully that looks pretty even. I'm working a little bit upside down, <laughs> but, but you can see it starts to fill. Starts to fill out. I think we need, 
maybe one more. Yeah. So that's that. And then um, in the center of this flower that I've started here, I'll show you guys the French knot because this is something that I love. Uh, the French French knots kind of together look, look really great all bunched up in the center of flowers. But um, what you do is you're going to wrap the thread around your needle and I'm doing three, but you can do, some people do two, depending on how big you want it, and just kind of hold it a little bit tight, and, the, um, and send the needle back through the fabric, and then it'll come through just like that. And you do it a bunch of times, and it starts to look really cool. <laughs> I'll do it slowly again just in case hopefully you guys can see so I did three and then I just kind of keep it on there and pull it a little oops I messed that one up but yeah one two three yeah there we go and then don't want to pull too tight. <laughs> there we go. I love these little um, rosette type flowers here and I think the French knot looks really good in, inside there to fill up. Fill up the center. But yeah, hopefully you can see a lot of those work and then what I've got going on on the outside of this is you would create or you draw um, just stitch a number of straight little lines you want them relatively the same oh come on all right stitching and talking is not always a good idea <laughs> but um, you want them relatively the same uh, length, these little lines. And what you do, let's see, I'm gonna come back up. Is you're gonna alternate over and under. So I'm gonna go over this one and under this one. And then same, so over this one, under that one that I made a little too short. And you just keep repeating that around. And because I have an even number of lines, I'll need to um, sort of go underneath two at some point to just start alternating that so that you're not over under on the same ones at all the time. But if you have an odd number then that's then it sort of works itself out for you. But yeah, and you can start to see how that builds up. And you want to keep that kind of loose you can pull it a little bit and start to pull them into the center but you don't want to pull real tight on the on this sort of thing actually i'm gonna go under there's my double under but yeah that's basically it did i i don't know if there are any questions oops twisted. It's okay. There we go. But yeah. I'll show you guys 
the um, finished version of the second pattern that I'm working on. So this will be the second, or uh, one of the components for the second pattern that will be released. And I wanted to share this with you because you can see the, the patterned background. Um, something else that I really like embroidery for is to fix or upgrade clothing. Um, I have a hoodie here with a, a paint stain on it. Um, and I'm creating a floral design to um, cover that whole little kangaroo pouch area. Um, and so embroidery is really fun for something like that. But there's a little caterpillar. And then to show you the um, sort of, you can see the pencil lines a little bit better on here. This one's a little bit bigger. Uh, so you can get more detail in there. And then I've used the split stitch to um, outline and then I've started to fill it in and I'm, I'll actually be using the split stitch basically on all of this to use to do the filler and all of that but I did use the French knots for the eyes and um, at the little end of the antenna so there's a lot of um, applications for for these stitches beyond just flowers too so um, but yeah I don't know Let's see. I couldn't really see the questions while I was, if there are any. Um, do I freehand the pattern? So uh, both, I've done both. Um, the patterns that I've been, been making um, for the McClung ones, I uh, have been tracing those essentially onto, um, onto the fabric. And I use a backlight, so I actually just hold the fabric down over my iPad and trace the design that I drew already, um, so that it's a pretty true likeness. With with this one though, I actually just drew um, drew this directly on here based off of the print, and then created the uh, pattern afterwards. So, <laughs> so I do a little bit of both. <laughs> but, yeah. Let's see, did I miss any others? Which stitch would you say? Very, very new beginner. Um, I, I think the, um, the split stitch, I know it can be a little bit uh, tricky um, to, to split the, uh, the thread coming back through, but I think it's, it's a really, really useful stitch and it's also very forgiving. So if your stitches are a little bit further apart, um, and, but you're splitting them back through, it's, that's not quite as noticeable um, as it would be if you were just sort of straight stitching and you had different lengths there, that would be more noticeable. So I think that one's a really, really useful one. Um, oh, thanks. That's great to know my voice. <laughs> Sounds good. Let's see. Yeah. Well, I think that's everything I have for you guys. If there's nothing else. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining me. Um, I'm really glad to be here. And I I love the McClung. I feel so lucky to to get to graduate from UT and then, and then work there. Um, and hopefully you guys will get to embroider some things and you like what you've seen. And... You can share it with all of us. Um, yeah, I, I guess I'm not too early. All right. Well, have a great rest of the day and a great rest of the week, everyone. Um, oh. <laughs>